Hey guys, as you can probably tell in the title, this is going to be a beginner's guide of owning a rifle, an AR-15, since it is the most used firearm in the United States. So, uh, as you can probably see in the recent two videos I posted regarding the Daniel Defense, I got a Daniel Defense, so I figured there's probably other people buying rifles too, carbines, whatever you want to call them, uh, and I figured to make a guide, I don't know how long this video is going to be. Uh, but I'm basically going to talk about everything that you should probably know about. I probably will miss, miss some things because just I'm, because I'm human. So I do apologize for that. But I will do my best to try including everything. But before you have even have the rifle, if you don't even have a firearm, you're going to have to pick up some cleaner. I prefer G96, which uh, cleans, lubricates, and protects. So you have this one. I think you can buy this for about, usually it's on sale through Amazon for about $15 a bottle. Um, but if you have any other friends who are into firearms, they'll probably just recommend their go-to. So there's really no wrong answer there. Uh, I just like the smell of this one and it's very thin. I, I don't like thick, so I prefer something that's thinner. Uh, you can either go with this, just like a typical rag. Uh, if you can't you know, buy this, I mean, I bought this off of Amazon for I think about $11 and then there's my two brushes in there. Uh, I feel like the brushes are probably not as useful compared to a handgun, but anyway, so just some patches, preferably that are lint free. Um, gun oil, this is, <laughs> this is actually Wilson Combat Oil, um, but any gun oil will really work. I use this one. And then most importantly, if you don't wanna like push through uh, the barrel of your rifle, Snake board. This is just some generic one off of Amazon for about, I think I paid $10 for it. And uh, I've used it about five times now and you just pull that sucker through. So um, yeah, you're gonna need, though you're not gonna need a lot of gun oil, your bolt assembly will require a little bit. And then I personally, personally like, to, I like to put this also on my um, charging handle since uh, metal and metal touches underneath. So I just like to put some there. Uh, I also like to put on the two pins when you're disassembling the upper and the lower just because on at least the Daniel Defense I have it's still a little stiff so I like to put some oil just so it's a little easier to push through and um, I guess it's just going to be like what to expect when you purchase your first rifle. Um, it's okay to be like scared and fearful and nervous. I know when I got the Daniel Defense and I shot it or even before shooting it, like when we were putting on the EOTech, whatever, we did all that at the range. But um, when we were sighting it, I was very nervous to uh, pull the trigger on it. And I would rather you be nervous and cautious than thinking you know it all. Um, like I said in all my other videos when they're regarding firearms is I'm open to learning. You know, if you call me out that I'm wrong, I will accept it. And, you know, I, I get to learn something too. I'm not one of those small gun YouTubers that knows it all. Uh, just something I recently, you know, in the last year, year and a half, got into. So, um, one piece of advice that I will put in here before we actually go to anything else is to anyone who's never shot a gun before is to have a healthy fear of the firearm, since it is something that can kill you. But embrace, respect the power that you have when you're wielding that firearm. For example, the rifle, since this is more of a you know beginner video for AR-15s, uh, just respect the power you have within your hands and uh, just always treat like it's loaded. Obviously don't flag. Also, I don't know if I mentioned this, but this will be a much longer video, so please bear with me, and hopefully you guys do learn something new. This is very important to talk about. Um, when I was going through just the YouTube searches of uh, AR-15 guides, beginner guides, uh, I think the last one I saw that was, was recent was six years ago, and there's a lot of things that have changed in the last six years, so, Forgive me if I do forget some things. I will try making this as in-depth, but as beginner friendly as possible. So uh, yeah, with any further ado, let's just uh, get into the video. All right, hey guys, before we even consider going to the range, we want to understand basic functions of the rifle. So most importantly, there's nothing in the mag well. And then I don't think you'll be able to see it from this camera view, but... Um, there's nothing in the chamber. So, um, I have a 40, uh, excuse me, a 90 degree selector. So it's going to, uh, let's see if I can do it like this. 
So that is 90 degrees. And then there's also, uh, this, this is stock with the Daniel Defense, but there are 45s, which would be like uh, something like this. So it's go from like this to this. I think it's personal preference, but for right now, I'm going to stick with the 90. Um, I'm going to talk about what is necessary on a rifle or a carbine for that matter, uh, from most important to least important. Most importantly, you're going to need sights or iron sights. Uh, obviously, as you can see, I don't have backup irons, which is something I'm going to do eventually, but uh, this EOTech was a lot. So for right now, I'm going to just enjoy the EOTech, put up back, or excuse me, put on backup irons. So you're going to need a sight. Second of all, you're going to need something that you'll be able to see with in the dark. Um, if you do use this rifle for self-defense. Um, it doesn't have to be pressure padded, but I believe most flashlights come with the pressure pad uh, option. So I'm not 100% sure on all of them. This is the Crimson Trace 202, I believe. So we have the, we have the sight, then we have the flashlight. You're going to then need a sling. Um, which especially if you're, you know, carrying it out, I wouldn't recommend just holding the rifle. Let's see. This one in the back is stubborn sometimes. There you go. <clears throat> you're going to need a sling. They come with, oops, you're going to need to buy two QD mounts. And then you, you can put one, you know, right here on the upper or on, on the rail, excuse me. And then regarding the back one, some people put it here on the back of the stock. Uh, I like mine right here some, on the rear of the um, lower receiver. So, you know, it is personal preference, mess with it. And then regarding slings, there are two kinds of options. You have a two point sling, so it connects to two places, or you'll have a one point sling, I believe. So I'll have one, you know, I think for a one point sling, I don't have a lot of experience with these. I've seen them on the internet, but I've never had the privilege of running one. So I can't, you know, give you guys all the correct information here. I believe you'd put it up here on the rail and then you could, it's very nice from switching if you're a left side, left side shooter to a right side shooter. So there's the advantage on that. So now that we talked about um, everything on the rifle, you know, most importantly, you're going to need sights so you can see what you are shooting at, then light so you can identify what you're shooting at. Um, and then, you know, regarding whatever kind of firearm you buy, rifle, carbine, for the, if it's a higher end, I believe it will come with a, with a grip, a vertical grip, but you know, if not, you can buy a BCM. I really like those. It's a little shorter than the Daniel Defense grip actually. Um, and it's really nice if you do almost want to C clamp it. So you're gonna, it's gonna look like this. Um, let's see, anyway, it'll look like this with the BCM basically. And then um, also before we do go into, you know, dealing with loading the firearm, of course we'll be doing this empty. Um, let's just quickly take apart the firearm so I can show you where you want to put up lube and clean it correctly. Uh, I will also be doing it uh, at the end of the video when I actually go to the range and shoot. I will, uh, <clears throat> I'll take it apart and clean it when I get back. So you're gonna need the, uh, you know, something that's plastic. I use this, so just plastic little pencil, and you're gonna push on these two screws. Let me see if both you can. You have this one here. You're just gonna push it down, and then you have this one here, so. So that one went out, and then we have this one. There you go. See, since I've been putting oil on it, it it's a little smoother. It's a little easier to take them out, so then they'll look like this. And I'll actually go, I'll go like this so you guys can actually see. So I just make sure by pulling both of them to verify they're out. And then as you can see, as I was pulling, the lower is out. So I'm going to show you since it's basically um, dismantled, how where the crucial parts of putting oil is. Uh, you can put some gun oil here, right there. As you can see, she's a little oily anyway. Most importantly, on your charging handle. Let's see. On your charging handle, you can probably see, she, you know, it's, a, it's not dirty, it's just from all the oil, little bit of oil I put in there. Just of the little bit of oil. And when it comes to gun oil, a little goes a long way. So 
Um, I put like maybe a little drop and you can see that she's very well oiled. Um, I think that's so far all you need. And then lastly, as I said, is on these screws or the whatever you want to call them, bolts. Uh, I put two on these screws. So when you are putting the lower back to the upper, it'll go in nicely. So now that we've done that, let's uh, put this back together quickly. So it just goes like, oh. I'm gonna put the dust cover up. Just like that. Push in the first one right here. Boom. Verify by pushing on both. If you want, you can use the pen and just verify just by pushing down. Verifying that they're all in. And you can pull the charging handle to verify. So as you can see, that's pretty quick. You know, oiling takes maybe like two minutes. And um, now that you know where to oil, but uh, let's talk about loading the weapon and then you know, performing basic malfunctions and stuff like that, so. Okay. Now that we talked about the hollow, the light, the sling, and then the foregrip itself. Ooh, my sling's going everywhere. Uh, we'll just do this to make it a little easier. Okay. So, now that we talked about all that, we're going to talk about loading the firearm, and obviously, there's not gonna be anything in the magazine since we are at home, but um, you're going to make sure it's clear by pulling the charging handle first. You're going to visually inspect that there's nothing in there. So as you can pull, I don't know if the camera picks it up. So you can see there's nothing in the chamber, nothing in the mag, in the mag. So what you're going to do, you're going to grab your empty magazine. You're gonna place it in the firearm and I like to just slap it in there um, just to help with preventing a malfunction. You're going to pull your charging handle back and that locks the bolt to the rear, right? As you can see. And then this will stick out right here, the bolt to release. And you can either, you know, if, you're long, if you shoot left-handed, this is perfect for you because you get to just push this down. You get to push this back down, but there's also a Magpul bad bad lever, uh, battery assist device. I don't have one on here. I do plan on doing a video on that at some point and doing a review, but obviously I need to buy it first and uh, run it before I can put you know, my opinions on that. So anyway, you can either slap the bolt release or you can press it if you're left-handed. So let me just show you what happens here. The magic happens. So once you slap it, now you have a round in the chamber and then you're able to when you hold up and then you put it to fire you're able to pull the trigger and talking about safety is the safety selector is i don't like to when i'm down here and my low ready i don't like to put it to fire as i'm going up or excuse me when the rifle is facing down towards my feet I personally, and you know, there's a lot more better resources out there than listening to me. Uh, for example, you have, um, for example, you have Lucas, uh, T-Rex Arms, or uh, someone I've really grown to really like and love their content is Fieldcraft Survival. Um, Mike, Mike Glover is, um, has a lot of experience, so I would take advice from someone who has a little bit more experience with all this than I do. Um, they're very great re resources, so, um, Anyway, when I don't like to put the the selector to semi when the gun is in my low ready. When I start bringing it up and it, uh, acquiring my targets, that's when I flip that switch and I'm ready to pull the trigger. And then as soon as I decide I'm done firing, shoot, and I decide I'm going to stop shooting, it goes down. It, it, it's going to take a lot of reps and that's why I recommend doing a lot of dry firing is just to you know make it a habit. I know initially it seems like there's a lot going on, but it's, you know, if you just practice, you know, dry firing is um, very cheap and uh, gives you a reason to hang out with your rifle a little bit, give it some quality time together. So basically when I'm, when I'm in my low ready and I just 
find my target. I'm gonna pull, select, shoot, and as soon as I decide I'm going to stop shooting, safety, and she goes down. So it's just a lot of repetition. Um, I probably don't recommend, you know, if the gun is in your low ready and you safety, you know. Now, if your finger even slides on that trigger and you're, you have a buddy maybe slightly to your left and your gun's facing that way and you accidentally pull that trigger, your buddy has a fucking hole in his foot. So uh, I take this stuff very seriously and, you know, dry firing, practicing in your shop, garage, you know, in your room, obviously, where there's no ammo. I'm in the shop, so there's not any ammo here. Um, so, yeah. So, basically, one more time. We'll run it one more time. Gun gun is loaded. Gun is loaded, right? We're at the range. Um, it is empty, by the way. I'm going to be... I'm going to get my stance. And Mike Glover does a really great job ex uh, explaining that. So, shout out to Mike Glover. Uh, you can just you know watch an AR-15 video or how to hold the AR-15 um, by Mike Glover. Shout out to you, Mike Glover. Anyway, when you're in your low ready, you go up, trigger goes or safety goes to fire, and then you're able to pop, pop, pop. You decide to stop shooting, safety, gun goes down, just like that. And then in case you do flag someone. Um, you're, you're so excited, you know, shooting your rifle, your brand new rifle, you accidentally pull the trigger, you depress the trigger one more time, it's on safety, so no one gets hurt. So, stuff like that. Um, yeah, I believe, I believe I've hint, talked about everything you can talk about. Um, you know, a lot of repetition. Uh, when I get a new firearm, regard, even my SIG, uh, even the shadow systems, a lot of dry firing goes on in the background, uh, especially, with rifles, since this I'm new to this field, you know I've shot quite a, I've shot at least a th you know a few thousand rounds of nine mil. And I think I've shot about less than a thousand rounds of uh, two two three five five six. So you know just a lot of repetition and muscle memory. So um, I think that's all we can really talk about um, until we get to the range. I guess. Hold on. There's one more thing we can talk about, and that is going to be reloading. Um, there's two ways you can do it, especially since I have an 18, uh, I find it a lot more effective this way. So you need, you need ammo to keep her happy, right? So you know, you're pow, 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 and you need to reload. I personally like to tuck it on, into my shoulder, take this one out and then put a new one in, slap it. And she's going ready, going back to work. You know, uh, I personally like that one most is doing uh tucking it deep into my shoulder basically like you're tickling your lat if you work out you know you get to tickle your lat take the old one out put the new one in and she goes ready back for work um or you can just keep it up high ready drop this one put a new one in and you're going back you know back to work you're feeding more lead but like I said, since I have a longer rifle and it's, you know, it's kind of hard to hold all that weight with one arm, I like to tuck it, dump, new one goes in. And then, you know, obviously she's going to be, uh, the bolt, uh, excuse me, the bolt will be back. And then you just um, slap and you're back to work. So, yeah, hopefully this long introduction and stuff like that helps. Um, I know, you know, getting to firearms can be very scary. So, um, hopefully this guide does help you, um, and answer any of your questions. You know, if you guys do have any questions, feel free to, you know, comment down below or, you know, there's a lot of great resources out there. Uh, I believe I've talked about all the basics and, uh, just regarding AR-15 care, uh, malfunctions, stuff like that. Uh, I guess malfunctions, we can talk about malfunctions quickly. Uh, if, if, if you do have a W um, failure to feed, I would drop the mag quickly and then you're going to pull the charging handle and the round should eject. Um, if you do get a Daniel fence, these mags work well. I've never had any malfunction. Um, if you did watch the other video, I did have quite a few malfunctions with the Magpul Gen 2s. Uh, I'm not really sure what's going on about that, but um, if you have a Daniel defense mag or a... What was the other mag I used? Amend Gen 2s. 
Uh, I'll put a picture somewhere around here. But I have had zero malfunctions. But anyways, another great resource while I'm talking about malfunctions, on Amazon, I will put the, <clears throat> the picture above, is buying dummy rounds. I wouldn't buy the plastic ones since the, the bolt carrier is going to chip the fuck out of the plastic. I'd buy brass, well they're painted blue, but they're brass or steel, I'm not 100% sure. And um, you load it within your magazine. You know, you, if you're putting 30 rounds in here, I would put five, put a, put one every five rounds. And then when you're shooting, you know, you're doing your pow, 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 it's going to malfunction. Drop the mag, hold the charging handle back, put the magazine back in, and you're back to firing. So, um, like I said, a lot better resources out there, but I believe I've talked about you know the basics of an AR-15, and we'll talk about more when we get to the range here. So, uh, yeah, also consider liking, sharing, subscribing. I know this is gonna be a much longer video, and hopefully you guys do learn something. Say in all my firearm videos, I don't claim to be an expert by any means. Uh, I'm learning and hopefully you guys are able to learn something through me. That's the beauty of the gun community. So um, Besides that I'll see you guys at the range. All right. Hey guys, it is that day. We're finally gonna be going to the range. So uh, I topped off my AR mags I'm gonna top off some of my sig mags quick and then we'll probably head out and then I also I'm trying to record another video within this video is um, PMC 223 bronze ammo. Uh, I also have some 5.56 X-Tac ammo, I believe it's called. So uh, we just wanna see how that performs as well. I assume from like the Reddit reviews, I, I believe that Daniel Defense will spit this out easily, but I think there's been some mixed reviews on the 5.56 X-Tac version. Uh, I believe some said there was failure to eject or it was, uh, they're just very, very dirty. But regardless, we're gonna test it out here, so yeah. Without any further ado, I will see you guys at the range. All right, hey guys, we're at the range here. Uh, we're gonna pop off with some, uh, I'll put the picture. I actually don't remember the rounds I used, but uh, we also have some PMC 223 bronze ammo. So we're gonna get that, we'll get a couple reps in and then we'll kind of go from there, so. We got some decent hits. Um, I got two rounds left. So, um, I'm a little shaky. I haven't shot in a while, actually. It's been like a week and a half since the last video. About a week and a half. So, I'm gonna get some practice in here. But yeah, we're gonna run it. Obviously, when we're here at the range, we want to practice all those things we kind of talked about. You know, when to flip the selector, when we are going to be shooting, making sure we have a decent stance, and then um, making sure we can get you know get eyes on target sorry if it is a little windy uh i didn't choose the best day for recording but it's pretty nice out today so but yeah it is it is a little um windy so hopefully you guys don't hear too much of the wind but uh yeah i think i got two more rounds left and then we're going to transition to pmc and see if the daniel defense likes it or not so uh let's uh put down these last two rounds and uh we'll go from there all right so the weapon is empty. We're gonna drop the bolt here. And then uh, I'm gonna pack some mags here quick and then we'll transition to shooting some 223 PMC bronze, so. End of it. Yes, I am on the floor just because I didn't have enough room on my desk to do this. So, uh, yep, we're on the floor. Get over it. Uh, you'll need this, a little pen or something. Uh, like I said, on the Daniel Defense, these two pins are kind of stubborn for me to push out. So it takes a while for me to push them out. So I found this plastic pencil, pen, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I just push it out. You're gonna need uh, some cleaner. I showed all this in the beginning, but I just want, you know, if people skip through Boar Snake, uh, this is just through Amazon. These are some new patches that have no lint. So they are ping, ping mic. Patches, I, I think I paid $11 for them on Amazon for a thousand and then gun oil. So first of all, we're gonna make sure it's clear. Nothing in the mag. 
And then we're gonna check chamber. I don't think you'll be able to see it, but there's nothing in the chamber. So firearm is clear. We're going to remove the sling. Okay, we have the sling taken off. Now we're gonna use our pen here. We're gonna push on these two. And there's, I'm just going to do a basic strip. You know, I know there's a lot more in-depth reviews or in-depth cleanings. I'm going, since this is only my third time firing it, I'm going to just do a basic field strip basically and just make sure it's clean. So we push out that. We're gonna lift up the firearm. Oops. Push out the second pin. Pull out both pins on this side. And then the upper and the lower, just like that. We're going to take out the bolt carrier and the charging handle. Like that, like that. So now we just have the upper. And I'm going to close this dust cover. Uh, I'm gonna close the dust cover, boom. We're gonna set that aside for now. I'm going to spray the um, charging handle on the bolt carrier group, or bolt carrier, with um, my spray, just to let it kind of get ahead there. Let that, just like that. Like I said, this is a fair, fairly basic cleaning. Uh, I don't go, you have your lower here that you want to clean as well. I would just spray a little bit, you know, little goes a long way here, and just clean. That. So you're cleaning right here where the action hits. Just give it a nice wipe. As you can see, it's uh, it's pretty dirty. And I always, I don't know why I do, but sometimes I get some carbon buildup in the magwell itself. So I like to just, it's probably a lot more common for handguns, but I still do it. Make sure everything's dry. And you are gonna put gun oil here as well at the end, and I will show you guys. We'll clean this in case of any residue on the... Okay, so now that that's clean, I, for, I grab my pencil here, and I'll just wrap it in this, flip it over, and I just go deep in there and clean it out. And as you can see, quite a bit of carbon. And I didn't even shoot that much, honestly. I think I only shot like 130 rounds. There you go. I moved the camera just a little bit so my knee was out of the frame. I'm sorry about that. All right, so now that the charging handle's all clean, let's actually move the upper. Like I said, I don't go too, too in depth about this. You know, this is just a basic strip. There's gonna be a lot better recommendations and. Uh, in-depth cleaning on YouTube so we do that put that aside we gotta grab more now for our bolt carrier group grab a little bit more clean here and we're gonna oil this at the end anyway but I'm gonna put a little bit more on here and of course you can wear gloves if you want to you know in case of the carbon stuff like that I just uh, make sure when I'm all done I go wash my hands, so I'm not too worried about it. And you know, if, if she's your first, you wanna take care of her, so you wanna clean her very well. Uh, I try not to let that consume my entire life, you know, but I, I try doing a pretty decent job of cleaning it, so. So you're just gonna keep cleaning here. We're gonna keep cleaning this right here. The bolt carrier group is probably gonna be the dirtiest part out of everything. Make sure you guys can see. And you, here, you don't wanna rush. You wanna just, you know, get familiar with your rifle carbine and just take your time, clean everything nicely. Make sure you can, you know, clean everything. Get in all those nooks and crannies. Like I said, there's probably more effective ways of cleaning and everything. And, uh, but this is just the way I do it. So 
You know, no harm done. It's not your rifle. I think inside here it's going to be pretty dirty. Alright, I think we got most of it here. Actually, all of it. Yep, seems like we got all of it. Yep. Okay, now... Now that we got the charging handle and then the bolt carrier group, and we got the lower done, we're going to move to the uh, upper. Make sure you don't get, you know, your cleaner all over your optic. So instead of spraying inside of there, I recommend just grabbing more patches. Let's grab a few more patches, spray in there. And just give it a nice, Clean. And I'm going to use that pen here in a brief moment to just clean much as I can. Pretty dirty. Like I probably mentioned earlier, hopefully you guys do learn something here. Um, and comment down below what you learned. And uh, I will also plan on doing a beginner's guide, everything you need to kind of know, owning a uh, handgun. That will be in the works probably within the next month or so. Um, I have a, quite a few other videos that I'm planning to do. So um, you're just going to have to be patient with me. And I hopefully, you know, this video uh, can help you guys. You know, it doesn't have to be a Daniel Defense. It can just be any rifle or carbine you own. And uh, just treat it well, take care of it, clean it, and it'll last you a very long time. See, it's pretty dirty. We're going to go through with one more rag here. I actually like these. I'm going to actually uh, put the um, product down below so you guys can buy some yourselves. I actually prefer these than the other ones I have in my other YouTube videos because they have lint everywhere. So um, I know you can just blow on them and whatever, but uh, this one's really nice. These are really nice. There's zero lint on them. So there you go. We got quite a bit of carbon in there still. So I'm going to do another drag here. And just be careful. You know, it's not a rush. You get to look at it, see if there's any damage to the firearm itself. We're going to close this dust cover. Clean it like that. I believe... We will do one more <laughs> just in case. We want to get it pretty clean. But like I said, I don't want this to like take up all my time. But yeah, hopefully, like I mentioned earlier, you guys learned something. This was useful. And um, there will be more videos out in the future. Like I potentially teased, there will be a BCM review out within the next week. Maybe two weeks max. Uh, this video took me a pretty long time to put together. So uh, hopefully you guys really do enjoy it. And now, snake bore. Like I said, this is just an Amazon one. I think I paid $10, $11. Just an off-brand one. Um, I will grab the rifle here. And I will spray... Oh, I have to clean this too, actually. I forgot. Right here, where the round um, goes in. Basically the chamber. The chamber, in fact. So we'll grab this, we'll turn it, kind of give it a nice clean. Boom. And then spray some of your gun oil inside the barrel itself. Then you're going to use your snake bore. And I only do this about two times, honestly, two or three times. You're going to drop it. Hopefully you guys can see it here. You're going to drop this uh, little metal piece into the ch barrel. You're going to feed it all the way through. And then it's going to pop up right here. You're going to just pull. Um... I feel like people are going to ask me how many times do you do it or, you know, what's the right or wrong. Um, I found two or three times is plenty. So that's what I do. And it is going to be pretty, 
pretty tight of a pull, so. Uh, there you go, just like that, you clean the barrel. And actually, I'm gonna spray some cleaner on the two little metal things right here. Little brass or whatever you wanna call them. So we're gonna just do that again. We're gonna assemble the rifle and then that will be it. So. Stuck somewhere. Okay. Just like that, we see the metal again. We're gonna keep pulling and we just pull. And just like that, your rifle, your upper is cleaned. So now we're gonna oil it and then we're gonna put it together. Um, like I mentioned probably in the other video or somewhere in this video, uh, gun oil, a lot, a lot goes a long way. I use the extreme duty Lucas oil, but you can, you know, get whatever you want. Um, so, most importantly here, I like to put some on these two uh, lower bolts that will screw to your upper, or bolt in, whatever you want to call it. I just put a little drop. And I really like the Lucas one, because it has this like metal needle. So you can kind of just scrape it together, but I just rub it in, just like that, and that's it. And I really like this one, the Lucas one, because it works in extreme cold, uh, especially where I am. Um, kind of appreciate that it's going to function under, you know, negative 20. So, because we do plan on doing some more range days and stuff like that within uh, when it gets a little chillier here. So, I'm very glad that I picked up this oil. So, you're going to, you know, lube up your charging handle just a little bit. Like I said, a little goes a long way. So... As you can tell, there's that nice, beautiful shine to it now. And then the bolt carrier group, I like to put some just in this groove. Just a little bit. There you go. There you go. That's all you really need. Uh, I believe, oh, and then I forgot right here on your action. Like I said, a little goes a long way. One ounce is probably gonna last you quite a few, quite a long time. So, I, you know, I, I think I paid for this uh, eight bucks over Amazon. So, you know, one ounce is definitely gonna last you quite a bit of time. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. So first you have your, make sure when you are assembling it, that it is like this the bolt carrier group it's not locked in like this because this metal piece right here is gonna hit up in the uh, upper and it's not gonna go all the way in so make sure your bolt carrier is extended all the way so what i like to do is first grab your charging handle and there's going to be actually like a little divot for your charging handle i had the hardest time trying to figure this out but let me see if the camera is going to pick it up there's gonna be a little indent here. I don't know how well the camera's gonna pick it up, um, but there's gonna be a little place where the charging handle goes and just sits there. And then once you put the bolt carrier group, you push everything and it'll go in very nicely. So, I didn't know that for a while. Like I said, first rifle. So you just let it sit right here. Then you grab with your left hand, your bolt carrier group, set it in there nicely, Oops. nicely. Just like that, and then just push just like that. So just remember, first the charging handle and there's gonna be a little groove that you put the, the charging handle down and it's gonna basically sit there and you just hold it with your right hand and then you put the, with your left hand, grab the bolt carrier group, set it in there, make sure the bolt carrier is extended all the way so it'll actually go all the way down to the barrel basically. And then you just push it in. Uh, I struggled with that for a little bit because I didn't pay attention to the little details but there's a little, groove basically meant, meant just for the charging handle. So now that it's all the way in, we're going to flip it over and we're going to basically put the firearm back together. Oops, just like that. Push this one down, boom, boom. Just like that. Fairly easy to uh, set up and this, you know, take apart. So um, let's see, we're gonna verify that these pins are in. 
And then lastly, we're gonna, oh yeah, she's getting broken into very nicely. Uh, pulling the charging handle is even easier now. Just like that. Uh, we can attach the sling now. Uh, I believe, I'll have it like this. So sling goes here. And you can extend the stock if you'd like to put it here at the end, if it makes it any easier for you. But there you go, and then you verify. And yeah, so basically guys, so yeah, that's all you need to do right here is you know make sure that everything's secure. You can pull the charging handle. It works, everything operates, nothing in the magazine. So, um, all right, hey guys. So this is probably gonna be the end of the video here. Uh, taught you guys how to clean the, an AR, shooting it, cleaning it, operating, uh, malfunction, stuff like that. Uh, I do apologize that this is such a long video. Uh, this took about a week to edit and just put together and everything. So uh, a lot of information here. Hopefully it was an in-depth, but pretty friendly information. And hopefully you guys learned something. That's basically the entire point here is for you guys to learn something. Like I always say in any other firearm video I have, if there's something I'm doing wrong, I see you guys in the uh, last YouTube video I posted. Uh, there's been a lot of recommendations and um, friendly uh, suggestions. You know, you don't have to push down your, your pistol mags um, like an AR mag. You just shove them in. So I do read all the comments. So consider commenting, sharing, subscribing. There will be more videos. And, you know, like I mentioned earlier, there's going to be a BCM review as well. So uh, without any further ado, thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video.